Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and we're going to start episode 2 of A Shadow of the Past, our saga series for Lord of the Rings. Now Steve watched my video and told me that I missed one time where the Hobbit deck would have been able to draw one card. And that was from when we had that bird. Do you remember the bird? It went and attacked the Rohan deck and then it moved over to the Hobbit deck. Well, its engagement cost was higher than our threat. So we should have been able to draw a card. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a card. And we have the Hobbit Pony. Yes, we have the Hobbit Pony. Sweet. As of now, that's the only thing that I've heard that I've done incorrectly. I'll make sure to put something in the titles right now or in a subtitle to tell you if there's anything else that I hear about later. Also, please note throughout this entire series, please have your Klingon subtitles on because if I do find something that's wrong after I've done editing, I will put it in through the Klingon subtitles. Our Hobbit deck is going to go ahead and play the Hobbit Pony. We're going to place that on Mary. Why that's important because Mary now will have a mount. Because of that, and Mary is a blue or spirit hero, he will gain one additional willpower. <laughs> We're also going to go ahead and spend two of Pippin's three lore resources to play out the Master of the Forge. Then we're going to go ahead and right away exhaust him so we can go ahead and look for an attachment. We'll go ahead and draw the top five cards of our deck. One, two, three, four, five. And we can put any attachment into our hand. And that's exactly what I was looking for. Although, Fireside Song? No, I, I want the blue for something else. So, yeah, we're going to do Fast Hitch. Nice. And you know what this is? This is an unexpected courage for hobbits. It's a little bit cheaper. Just allows you to ready the attached character. I realize I didn't say who I'm going to put this on. <laughs> so I'm going to use Pippin's last resource to go ahead and place this on uh, Sam. Just because then I can quest with him and then I can have him ready for any hide tests. Because I have a ton of allies out and hide tests are really going to hurt the Hobbit deck right now. For our Rohan deck, I think the first thing we're going to do is use Gildor and Glorian's ability. Spend one resource and draw a card. And we have the Dunedain Mark. Attached to a hero, the attached hero gains plus one attack. Boom! That is not what I was looking for, but that'll work. <laughs> We're going to put that on Grimbjorn. Now his attack is going to be five. That's awesome. So we'll spend one of Elfhelm's resources to put that on Grimbjorn. Then what we're going to do is we're going to spend two of the four resources that Grimbjorn has because it is also now considered a leadership, and we're going to put the Armored Destrier on him. Listen to this card. So it is restricted, which means he's all restricted out. <laughs> After the attached hero defends against an attack, exhaust Armored Destrier to ready the attached hero, then discard a shadow card from another enemy engaged with the defending player. Yeah, I like it. Let's go ahead and move into the questing phase. We're going to go ahead and play Elrond's Council. We can do that because we have Gildor and Glorian. We can increase the willpower of one other character. Let's choose Frodo. Uh, no, you know what? Let's choose Sam. We're going to choose Sam. So Sam has plus one willpower this round. And we can now reduce our threat by three. <laughs> so we're from 35, uh, 34, 33, 32. Whew, that's nice. Keep us a little bit lower. For the Rohan deck, I think we're going to go ahead and quest with Gildor and Glorian for three, and then our Westfold, uh, Westfold Horse Breeder for four. For the Hobbit deck, we're going to quest out here. We're going to go for two from Frodo, four for Treebeard, five here. I'm going to leave Mary, but I can always use his mount to be able to put him in at the end if I want. Five, and then six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, plus one more from Gildor, so that's twelve. So we've got 12 there, and then we're immediately going to exhaust the fast hitch. So Sam is ready. Uh, 13, 14 from Pippin, and that should be it. So 14 plus 4 is 18. There's a total of 10 threat in the staging area. Let's see what this encounter deck is going to throw at us this time. Okay, an evil crow, that's not bad. And we have oh, Peril and Hide 2. So this is for the Rohan deck because the Hobbit deck was first. So Hide 2. They have one ally out already. So we've got a value of 1. This is the whole reason I left Gildor and Elfhelm. So that's a total of 5 willpower that we're sending against this Hide test. Uh, nothing and 4. <laughs> we went for 5. Wow. Okay. We're good. Uh, and then, this, of course, this also says if you failed the high test, which we didn't, so we don't have to worry about that. Whoa! All right, well, that felt good. 
Right now we have 12 to 18 for our questing. I think I'm going to go ahead and use Mary instead of to exhaust him to reduce our threat. We're going to exhaust him and add another three willpower to that. So that would put us from 18 to 21. We'll also go ahead and add Rosie. Rosie will add two more willpower. So now we're at 23. 23 to 12 is 11 progress. <laughs> 11 minus 4 is 6, so we get to place 6 progress here. Nice. And this location's gone. And then I think we get to travel. And I think we're finally going to travel to a good location. Let's go ahead and travel to the Green Hill Country. So while this is the active location, characters get plus 1 willpower while committed to high tests. Nice. During the encounter phase, this Black Rider will have to go down to the Rohan deck unless the Hobbit deck wanted to take it. No, they're not going to want to take that. So the Black Rider is going to go back to the Rohan deck. And then this Evil Crow, the uh, Hobbit deck doesn't have to engage him, but they're going to because then they get to draw a card. And they'll draw another Hobbit pony. Sweet. Moving ourselves into the combat phase, we'll go ahead and place shadow cards and we'll place one on that evil crow now uh, steve actually asked me about this i have these tokens here to help me remember about their attack value drac is currently making some tokens for uh, increase in attack i don't have any so i'm using these other tokens and they've got twos and ones on them to help me remember okay what is, what is their attack so uh grimbjorn's attack is five so two two and one that's why it's there yeah sorry i don't i hope that doesn't confuse me but it just helps me because during recording it just makes it easier so i don't have to try and recalculate it so let's go ahead and do a combat here so for this black rider we're going to use green bjorn as our defender he's got four defense compared to the five attack so we'll def we use, use him as a defender and then immediately exhaust armor destrier and we can discard this shadow card ah, i didn't have an effect anyways but that's okay so let's see what this one is going to be nope no shadow effect so five points of damage minus four armor he takes one point of damage then we'll go ahead and spend one resource. He'll attack for five minus two. He does three points. Okay, that means in two rounds now, he can actually kill these Black Riders. That's nice. Okay, now the second Black Rider will just attack. Grimbjorn will then be used again to defend. That means he's going to take another point of damage. So let's go ahead and get a three-er here. So he has a total of four points of damage, which... Yeah, that's a bit of a bummer, but what can you do? <laughs> he does have seven health, so we're okay. And then we are going to use his ability to retaliate. He'll attack for five, uh, minus two armor, so he'll do three points of damage. He almost kills that guy. Man, three, four, five. If only we had enough to just do, well, five more points of damage because we have to get through their shield normally. Over on the Hobbit side, we have our crow here. So we're going to go ahead and exhaust Sam to defend. And then we are going to flip this, and it says attacking enemy gets plus one, plus two if the ring is exhausted. The ring is not exhausted, so he does one point of damage, but Sam has one defense. Then what we're going to do is we're going to spend the two resources on Treebeard. That allows him, as his ability, we can ready an end character. Boom. He's ready. He's got four attack. He's going to take out the evil crow. <laughs> yeah. Finally, we're going to go ahead and exhaust that Warden of Healing, and we're going to heal one of the points of damage on Grimbjorn, but he still has three points of damage. Yeah, we're going to need to find another Warden of Healing. This will end the round. We'll move ourselves up on threat. So the Hobbit deck is at 20 threat, <laughs> and the uh, Grimbjorn or Rohan deck is at 33. Moving to our resource phase, we've already generated resources, and then we'll go ahead and draw our cards. We have Guthwine, yes, and Silver Lamp. Nice. For our Rohan deck, the only thing I think we're going to do this round is spend Gildor and Glorian and Elfhelm's resources to play out Guthwine. Guthwine will have to be placed out on Elfhelm. This is an awesome card. After attached hero is declared as an attacker, exhaust Guthwine to give that hero plus two attack for this attack. If, um, if this attack is, destroys an enemy, return a Rohan ally from your discard pile to your hand. <laughs> it keeps bringing them back for more. For our Hobbit deck, the first thing we'll do, Master of the Forge. One, two, three, four, five. Grab five. Let's see. 
Oh, lots of good. Oh, man, we can get more resources. We do need more questing. So this could just get us more questing. This is always a challenge. Look at these are all attachments except for one. <laughs> you know what? We're right at 20 for our threat. Let's go ahead and grab resourceful this time because then I don't have to keep myself right at 20. Let's go ahead and spend one resource to play Resourceful. This is going to be from Sam Gamgee, and this is going to go on to Mary. I want more blue. So Mary will now generate two resources around. I'm also going to spend the two Mary resources for Arwen, because guess what? Read Arwen's ability. After Arwen exhausts, choose a character. That character gains the Sentinel and gets plus one defense. Hmm, maybe on Grimbjorn? <laughs> It's awesome. And then we're also going to play Hobbit Pony for free. We're going to put that on Mary, so Mary gets an additional plus one willpower. And you can see we're just going to keep powering up that willpower. And then let's go ahead and put out Tom Butterbur. That will cost us two of Pippin's resources. And you know what? I'm silly. I already had Mary with a Hobbit Pony. <laughs> That's going to go on to Sam. Sam also has the blue resource now, so he will get the plus one willpower, not Mary. Moving ourselves into the questing phase, the first thing I need to remember is to push this Black Rider back out into the staging area. He has the Morgul attachment. That means he'll jump back to the staging area at his threat, and then he's going to go ahead and engage us in attack. So annoying. But this should be the last, uh, the last time we have to deal with him, because I think Grimbjorn will be able to take him out. For questing with this deck, we'll go ahead and use Grimby, uh, Gildor for three. We'll use the Westfold Breeder for four, and then we'll use Frodo for six. For our Hobbit deck, we're going to send Treebeard for two, Bill Pony for three. We'll send Pippin for five. These two can go later. We're going to send Arwen for seven, and we'll go ahead and give Grimbjorn Sentinel, which doesn't really matter, but an additional shield. Heck yes. Then we'll send Tom for eight, and that's it for now. We'll be able to add these two later and Rosie if we need. Right now it is 14 to eight in the staging area. This first card will be for the Rohan deck, and it's just another Green Hill Country, adding two threat. And this card will be for the Hobbit deck, and we've got Stockbrook. When revealed, immediately travel to Stockbrook. If another location is currently active, return it to the staging area. Bananas! Right now, we are still winning, though, with questing. It's 14 to 12. I do think I'm going to push here. So I'm going to go ahead and use Mary. That's going to be for three more. So we're going to go from 14, 15, 16, 17. Then we'll go ahead and send Sam. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. That puts us to 24. Jeez. Okay, now I need to do some calculations. If my calculations are right, looking at this, 24 to the 12, we are literally one progress away from getting to the next quest card. So I think I'm going to go ahead and spend Sam's resource so he can activate his Song of Hope, and that will be just enough for us to get through this location and this quest card. We now have Escape to Buckland. When revealed, add a Buckleberry Fairy to the staging area. After several close calls with Black Riders, Frodo can tell they are hunting him. The Hobbit's only hope of escaping the dangerous pursuers is to cross the Brandwine River, if they can just make it to Buckleberry Ferry before they are caught. When revealed, the first player searches the encounter deck and discard pile for a Black Rider, of course. Reveal it, so we're going to have to be able to pass a high 2 test. Oh, this is going to be interesting <laughs> and added to the staging area. Shuffle the encounter deck. When a player fails a hide test, same thing as before, the Nazgul enemies will engage, and then they'll attack, as long as they are not already engaged. Response, this is new. After a player makes a successful hide test, place X progress on a non-unique location in play. X is twice the number of players in the game. So if we can succeed in this hide test, we'll already be able to place four progress on one location. That's important because of this card. So first of all, this card is immune to player card effects. So I can't use things like discarding a Rohan character and adding three progress here. I can't. It's immune to all player card effects. When there's at least one other location in play, the players cannot travel here. So see, I have to get all of the locations out of the staging area. Ugh. Okay, travel. The first player must make a hide three test to travel here. After this leaves play as an explored location, we've won the game. 
Here's our next Nazgul that we have to deal with. We now have three Nazguls out. Ugh. So we have to do our hide two test. Our first player is our Rohan deck. We only have two characters. We have Gildor and Glorian and Elfhelm. That's it. And if you look at this encounter deck, there's three cards. So I have no idea how we're going to do. Currently, we don't have an active location because this happens before we travel, so we don't get any plus for our questing or, yeah, our willpower, so it's just going to be what it'll be. Oh, let's see. Okay, three from Stock Road and uh, two from Pathless Country. That's five. We are equal. We have three plus two is five. Oh, okay. So we pass that. Hey, we pass that. So we can place four progress on any non-unique location. As much as I like the Green Hill Country, let's go ahead and get rid of it because we can. So we'll use all four to get rid of this. Then we'll go ahead and travel ourselves over to the Pathless Country. We're going to do that because if this is out in the staging area, it gets plus four quest points. So that's actually a seven. But now since this is the active location, it's only a three. Just so you know, we still have three locations out in the staging area, and two are unique. I mean, one we're going to have to travel to at some point, so we're going to have to travel here to get rid of it, because even if we succeed at hide tests, that won't get rid of this. So, uh, yeah. Right now we have two Nazgul in the staging area. This one for sure is coming down. I think I'm going to have that one engage the Hobbit deck. So the Hobbit deck can optionally engage one. We'll engage that one and then we can draw a card and Sam will, will be able to ready. Another Master of the Forge. That's kind of awesome. We'll then optionally engage this Black Rider. I need them out of the staging area so I can continue to quest successfully. The nice thing is we only have one card left in our encounter deck and we do not shuffle the encounter deck until the beginning of the next round so what we're going to do is uh grimbjorn is going to defend against this black rider's attack he's attacking for five he has five defense does nothing we're then going to exhaust his armor destrier so he can ready and discard this shadow card oh which does have an effect awesome so that doesn't happen He'll then use one of his resources, so he only has two left, and he will attack for five, minus two is three points of damage. So we'll place a three on this Black Rider. Then, this Black Rider is going to attack, Grimbjorn will defend again, he has enough defense, doesn't do anything, he will then use his response, spend that resource, another three points of damage, this Black Rider's toast. <laughs> Then what we can do is we can exhaust the Rohan mount that we have, and now he's ready again to defend for the third enemy that's on the Hobbit side. It's another Black Rider. It'll attack for five. Oh, he's got five defense. He'll spend this resource, use his ability. This Black Rider already had five points of damage on him, so he's toast. <laughs> we just cleaned the board. Thank you, Grimbjorn. And three points of damage already on this Black Rider. We'll go ahead and end the round. Our Grimbjorn deck will go up to 34 threat, and our Hobbit deck will go up to 21. We have now refreshed everyone. We'll go ahead and draw our cards. We have another e Eothane and another Silver Lamp. Nice. The first thing we'll do with our Hobbit deck is go ahead and play another Master of the Forge. So we'll spend the two resources from Pippin, and now we have two of them out. This is going to be fun. We're going to go ahead and do the first Master of the Forge. Draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. And an attachment. Hmm. Resourceful. Eh, no, I'm going to get Ent Draft. I think that'll be nice. Then I'm going to go ahead and shuffle this up because then we're going to do the same thing a second time here. So we'll grab Master of the Forge. One, two, three, four, five. And we've got, oh, Fireside Song. Sweet. So then I think what we're going to do is play Fireside Song, use Mary's two resources, and we're going to put this onto Frodo. This way, both players will receive the benefit of the willpower. And if I can find a song of one of the other uh, types of resources, we can throw that on Frodo and actually start using his resources. He's got six sitting there that we're not using. <laughs> so Frodo will have... One additional willpower, he'll be at three right now. For our Rohan deck, we're going to go ahead and spend two out of the three resources from Grimbjorn, and then one from Elfhelm and one from Gildor 
to put Eothane out. It's kind of hard. This means now Grimbjorn is only going to be able to use his ability once, but now we actually have an awesome ally that we can use for additional questing, and now when I want to play one of these cards where I can discard a Rohan ally to place three progress, which is going to be super helpful, we'll be able to ready him. For our questing this round, we'll go ahead and send Frodo for a total of three. Then we'll send Treebeard for five. We'll send Bill the Pony for six. We'll send Arwen for a total of eight, and she'll give the plus one shield to Grimbjorn. Heck yes. We'll send Butterbur for nine. We'll send Pippin for 11. So we'll go ahead and start with 11. Remember now, we can't place any progress on the current quest card. We just need to make sure we're not increasing our threat. On the Rohan side, we'll send Gildor for 3 and the Horse Breeder for a total of 4. So that puts us at 15. There's a total of 7 threat in the staging area. Let's see what we get. So we'll start off with the Evil Crow. So that's the Hobbit deck. The Hobbit deck has the Evil Crow. And then the Rohan deck will have Peril Hide 2. If you fail a hide test this phase, move, uh, remove each character you, you control from the quest. Well, this actually isn't a bad thing. I've got three characters remaining for me. So I've got Eothane for two, Gildor for three, that's a total of five, and Elfhelm for two, that's seven. So hopefully seven's gonna be enough. Hide 2, we'll flip two here, that's two, and nothing. Awesome, we succeeded. That also means we get to place four progress on the Green Hill Country. So we'll go ahead and discard that. That was in the staging area. Awesome. We had 15 questing compared to seven in the staging area. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, 15 to seven. So adding three to that would only be 10. So we totally completed this. Can't place any additional progress here. And unfortunately, I wish I could move to the, brand, uh, to the Buckleberry Ferry, but I can't because I have Bamferlong here. So we're gonna have to travel to Bamferlong for this turn. It says here, after the players travel to Bamferlong, each player engaged with a Nazgul enemy may ready a hero he controls. So we'll go ahead and ready Elfhelm. Okay, so he is ready to attack, which is actually kind of nice. During the encounter phase, we'll have the Hobbit deck optionally engage the Evil Crow. Our threat is still only, still only at 21. This has 25 plus 4, so 29 for its engagement cost. We'll get to draw a card. Heed the dream. That's a great catch-all card. I love it. We'll place one shadow card here on the Evil Crow and one shadow card over here on the Black Rider. So for this Evil Crow, I have a lot actually available to me. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the two resources here on Treebeard, and we're going to defend with him. So that unexhausts him, and we'll use this to exhaust. We'll flip this over. Oh, nice, and we got rid of a Nazgul. Great. And no, uh, no additional attack. He attacks for zero, so no damage. Over here, we'll have this Black Rider attack. We will exhaust a Grimbjorn to defend. And we have no shadow card effect. Five attack, five shield, no problem. I'm not going to do his response, though. Instead, what I am going to do is just the armor Destrier so that I can ready him. He's ready to attack, but I don't need to spend the resource because I want to attack with Elfhelm and kill that Black Rider together because then we can get a Rohan ally from our discard pile, which would be great. We have two heroes here still ready, Mary and Sam. Sam has one attack, Mary has one attack, that's two. That's not enough for the evil crow, but you know what? We have Rosie Cotton. We'll add her willpower to Sam Gamgee's attack. His attack is three then, plus the one from Mary. This evil crow is toast. <laughs> I love it. Over here, we'll go ahead and attack with Grimbjorn for three. Elfhelm will also attack for two. Then we're going to add in his Guthwine. That'll add two attacks, so that's four. Four plus three is seven. Seven minus four is three damage. Yeah, see a Black Rider. And that means we can gain an ally from our discard pile. We'll go ahead and grab the Snowborn Scout. During the refresh phase, we'll go ahead and do one point of healing for Grimbjorn. You know, he's the only hero that's been damaged this whole game. <laughs> We'll increase our threats, so our Rohan deck will be at 35, and our Hobbit deck will be at 22. Ooh, it's getting kind of high. We will then each draw a card, and we have Aaron Rider, nice, and another Rosicon. For the Rohan deck, I think we're going to go ahead and play Aaron Rider. We'll spend one resource from Elfhelm to do that. 
Then what we're going to do is use his ability so we can exhaust the Errant Rider to move one resource from the resource of a hero that you control to another. So let's move one of Frodo's seven resources over to Gildor. And then you know what? We're going to go ahead and play the Snowborn Scout as well. We'll use Grimbjorn's resource to do that, and we can place a progress token on this um, Bamferlong. So we'll have one on here. We only need two. <laughs> I'm doing this, though, because now I have two Rohan characters that I can potentially discard to, in order to place three progress. For our Hobbit deck, we'll go ahead and do Master of the Forge twice. I love that. Uh, when you get three of them out, think of how many cards you can get in your hand. Okay, fast hitch. Absolutely. That is the first one. Then I'm going to shuffle this up like so. Come on, songs. I'm looking for songs here. Okay, that's got to be good. We'll cut it or whatever. All right, draw five. One, two, three, four, and five. And, oh, here's a song of wisdom. Well, that, that'll do. So we'll grab a song as well. We're going to go ahead and play two silver lamp cards. One is going to go on Gildor and Glorian because, again, it has to be attached to a spirit hero. While attached hero is ready, shadow cards dealt to enemies engaged with you are dealt face up. They still activate, but it means that we can then know which ones to discard with Armored Destrial. Totally sweet. And I'm actually going to play one on each of our, our decks. So one will be on Mary, and one will be on Gildor. That is using two of Mary resor Mary's resources and two of Sam's resources, because they're also considered to be spirit resources. Then we'll go ahead and place Fast Hitch onto Mary so that we can exhaust him and ready him and have him go late to the quest. <laughs> I love it. And then we're going to do the Song of Wisdom here, and we're going to place that onto Sam so we get another willpower because he has another song. For questing this round, we're going to go ahead and send Gildor and the Horse Breeder for a total of four questing. I think that's it on the Rohan side. Oh, you know what? We'll send Frodo. So Frodo will be another three, so that's seven. On the Hobbit side, we'll start with Arwen for two, and she will give her plus one shield to Grimbjorn. Uh, Barlin for three, Bill for four, uh, Pippin for six, and you know what? We might as well Treebeard for eight. So we'll start with eight, but we can add both Mary and Sam if we want. Eight plus seven is 15, and there is three in the staging area. So what we're really hoping for right now are not locations. And of course, I got a location. After the player fails the hide test, shuffle a Nazgul from the discard pile. Okay, but that adds three threat. And then this one is for the Hobbit deck. Oh, we have a Black Rider. Oof. We are going to have to do a hide two test, which actually could work for us to get rid of the Marish. Nice. Okay, that'll work. Hide two test. Before we do the hide two test, I am going to exhaust Mary so we can decrease our threat by four. Because why not? We can. <laughs> and then I'm going to exhaust Sam for our hide test. His willpower is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Okay. We have nothing that's adding anything to hide test. No. Eight. We've got two here and nothing here. Definitely succeeded. We can then place four progress on this location. It's toast. <laughs> But we do have a Black Rider out again. We quested for a total of 15. There's only seven in the staging area. Definitely completed this location. And this is another victory location. Love it. Now this means we can travel to Buckleberry Ferry, but we now have to pass a hide three test. So I'm going to send Eothane for two. We'll send Gildor for a total of five and Elfhelm for a total of seven. Oh, that's not a ton. Will that be enough? We'll see. We'll grab ourselves the deck. Okay, I'm at seven. Okay, we'll flip the first. Nothing. Sweet. Uh, two. Okay, I, I think the, really, the most is four that I can recall. I don't remember seeing a five, so I think we're fine. Yeah, and a black steed. Awesome. We have succeeded at the high test. <laughs> Great. So now all we need to do is uh, be able to explore this location, and we've won the game, you guys. Woo! Well, it started off rough, but man, when all of a sudden that Hobbit deck got going, <laughs> that was awesome. Let's go ahead and engage this Black Rider, and we're going to have the Hobbit deck do that so they get to draw a card, and they get another Hobbit pony. 
Awesome. Okay, so now we'll get a shadow card. I am going to defend with uh, Grimbjorn. So he's defending. Uh, he has a total of five shield. Oh, oh no. Uh, Gildor is exhausted and Mary is exhausted. You know what? Before we place this shadow card, I am going to use Fast Hitch. Fast Hitch will ready Mary. Mary then has the silver lamp. So we get to see this face up. <laughs> Sweet. There, there's no, uh, there's no shadow effect. Great. So what we'll do is we'll exhaust Grimbjorn to defend. We'll spend one of his resources. He'll only have two left. He'll then attack for five minus two. He does three points of damage to this Black Rider. I have a good feeling about this, you guys. <laughs> We're going to end the round. We'll move to 19 threat for our Hobbit deck and 36 threat for the Rohan deck. We have generated our many resources. I did forget to use my Warden of Healing, so we'll use that to heal one point of damage on Grimbjorn. He only has one damage left. We'll draw our cards. We have a Song of Hope and oh, Valiant Sacrifice. Awesome. For this round, I think I'm just going to go ahead and put this Hobbit Pony here on Pippin. Uh, you know what? Not on Pippin. Let's go ahead and put that on Frodo because we can. That way he can ready. He now has, oh, he doesn't have any special ability because he's not a specific resource type. Bummer. That's okay. He still has one so he can quest late if we'd like. And then we'll go ahead and play the Song of Hope, which is free. And we'll put that on Mary. And you know what? What the hey? I've got the two Master of the Forges. <laughs> we might as well do it. So I'll exhaust both of them. We'll grab our deck. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see. We have another fast hitch. Wow. <laughs> see, yeah, once you get the Master of the Forges out in this deck, you are drawing essentially three cards a turn, and there's hardly any expensive cards in this deck, so you get to play all of them. One, two, three, four, five. It's totally awesome. Here, here's all of my um, Test of Wills. That'd be nice. Oh, Fireside Song. Let's go ahead and do that, too. We'll spend two resources from Mary and put Fireside Song on him. He now has a total of two songs, so he'll add plus two willpower. Holy moly. Between Mary and Sam, we've got tons of willpower. We'll spend one resource here, and we'll put Fast Hitch over on Frodo, so that way we can ready him and use him again if we want. I don't think we're going to do anything for the Rohan deck, so we're actually just going to go ahead and quest, and we're going to quest like crazy. So Frodo here is going to quest for three. Then we're going to have Treebeard, a total of five, six with Bill, seven, eight with Arwen, adding the plus one defense for Grimbjorn, nine for Barlamin, and I think I'm just, well, okay. I'm not going to include them now, but I can always include them later with their Hobbit ponies, so we'll just leave it at nine. I did forget to show you, but I am going to use the fast hitch so that Frodo is ready so we can use him for a hide test if need be. On the Rohan side, we'll quest for two from Eothane, a total of five with Gildor, and six with the Westfold horse. You know what? Uh, yeah, let's just do it that way. Six. That gives us a total of 15 to nothing in the staging area. 15 to zero. Let's see what we get. A high test. This is for the Hobbit deck. Okay. We'll exhaust Sam. Sam gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> So with one guy, we have nine. I think that should be enough. One and two. Awesome. That doesn't even do anything. So we succeeded in that hide test. And then this is for the Rohan deck. We have Peril. When revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a Nazgul enemy. Either add it to the stage here or put it into play. Engage with the first player. The first player would be the Hobbit deck. Yeah, might as well do that. We'll go ahead and grab him from here. There he is. He'll be engaged with the first player. The Hobbit deck then gets to draw one card. Oh, a test of will now. <laughs> That's really useful. But that means we put nothing in the staging area. So we quested for more than enough to be able to complete this scenario. <laughs> awesome. The ferry boat moved slowly across the water. The Buckland shore drew near. Sam was the only member of the party who had not been over the river before. He had a strange feeling as the slow, gurgling stream slipped by. His old life lay behind in the mist. Dark adventure lay in front. He scratched his head, and for a moment had a passing wish that Mr. Frodo could have gone on living quietly at Bag End. Choose either Gandalf's Delay or the Ring draws them and add it to the campaign pool. 
So this is where I'm going to need your guys' help. Which one should I put into the campaign pool? That means it's coming out every round for the next bunch of quests. <laughs> Then choose Gildor and Glorian or Mr. Underhill and add it to the campaign pool. For sure, I'm going to do Mr. Underhill just because I have Gildor as a hero. The chosen cards have been earned by the players. We earned a total of three victory points for this scenario. I'm really bummed. I really wanted to use this, but I totally forgot. <laughs> Grimbjorn was just so good. I wanted them to continue to attack so he could defend and then do his response. So I lost that victory point that I potentially could have gotten, but I did get three victory points for this scenario. So I've placed a shadow in the past here, and I have a score of three. I have Mr. Underhill, Underhill here for our boons, but for our burden, I'm going to leave blank, and I'm going to see what you guys think. Here are the two cards in question, Gandalf's Delay, and then the ring draws them. So Gandalf's Delay will always happen no matter what. It's a setup. You always will start with one less card. Or the ring draws them potentially might not happen. If you flip this as a shadow card or maybe for like a high test or something that's similar to that, it's just a treachery card. doesn't do anything. But if you do draw it, it's a surge and has a pretty terrible one revealed. I am leaning a little bit towards Gandalf's delay because I do feel like one less card you can manage. But this could come out and then depending on how much you shuffle the encounter deck could come out twice in a game. <laughs> so I don't know. But I do want to know what you guys think, and then dependent upon what you guys say, the next quest will, and going forward, will use one of these burdens. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a blast. These decks are a ton of fun. I'm sure I made a couple mistakes. If I did, I apologize. I'll make sure to make notes. Do let me know, but we'll start with the next adventure after we do Flies and Spiders from The Hobbit. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you at the next stop.